Welcome back to Daytime Ottawa. As I mentioned earlier, Valentine's Day is tomorrow and it's never too late to find a great gift idea to, or to make plans. And my next guest is going to share a little bit about Valentine's Day and then share some wonderful wines you can enjoy with the one you love, perhaps with friends, perhaps with family. Rob Statham joining me, sommelier, beer sommelier with the Drunken Grape. Welcome, buddy. Hey, man. Thanks for having me back. Always it's a, a pleasure. pleasure my Great friend. to see yes. you. Great to see the you as well. The day of love tomorrow. And the weather's and beautiful you, I, this today. This is what I love about you, though. You, you don't just bring in wine. You actually do your research uh, when, it, you know, when it comes to any holiday to find out a little bit about it. So talk to me about Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, so under the reign of I. Claudius the second Roman emperor, they locked up this uh, guy named Valentinus. He was yeah. locked up in jail. Christians, you know, they went after a purge of Christianity in those days. It was against the rule and the reign of the day. And on his way to his, the gallows to be hung or executed, he fell in love with the jailer's daughter and wrote, from your Valentine, the day he was executed. And this is mythos. It's shrouded in mythos. But right. this propelled into the Middle Ages. The Roman Catholic Church actually has three saints that are both all martyred named Valentine as well. Right. So this ties into things like Chaucer's lovebirds. He wrote on this. Yeah. And, you know, commemorating the marriage of royals. And really what happened is... The Puritans, you know, when they jumped on the ship, the Mayflower and whatnot, mm -hmm. and sailed across over to uh, North America and landed at Plymouth Rock, they brought some of these traditions with them. And into the 19th century, Valentine's Day cards exploded as an American yeah. phenomenon. It's like a four and a half billion dollar <laughs> crazy, piece of business. Eh? We're not even talking about <laughs> wine yet, you know? Yeah, no, it's true. And you know what? I mean, and we're celebrating it in so many different ways now, too, right? I mean, we had uh, Daniela Croco on the show talking about, you know, she's doing a Galentine. Valentine's, Palentine's Day, you know, it's just a, it's just a great way to, to celebrate love in, in all its forms. And a great way, of course, to celebrate is with wine. And you brought some wonderful wines with you here today, it right? It is. So I've got a variety here. I dipped into this one on Quailsgate. Couldn't help this myself. The red Pinot Noir. Okay. So that comes from volcanic soils. That's 150 acre vineyard. It's huge. So that's one of the prides of the Okanagan Valley. Okay. Pinot Noir is nice and light. It's, you know, it's... Uh, it's got a lot of flavor notes of cherry and strawberry. There's sometimes a bit of smokiness and a little tobacco box notes too. Kind yeah. of cool things going on with that grape. But it's it's because of its light nature and its acidic nature, a lot of people love it for easy drinking and sipping. Okay, on, you so know? not so even paired. You, not you, even this paired. is one of those ones where yeah, you just Yeah, you can just enjoy that with your, your loved one tomorrow. You know, go to the LCBO, grab one of these bottles, enjoy it. Would it go it. well with strawberries, chocolate, that, that kind of thing? Maybe dark chocolate okay. because it's a dry okay. side of things. It's a right. bit bitter, so it would it would enliven that a little bit. But then you got a rosé in the yeah. middle. So rosé rosés have come a long way. I love way, right? the color of rosé. Yeah. You know, you get strawberry inflections more in that rhubarb. I tried this today. It's quite delicious. Nice. It's a crisp style, so it's got okay. a very crisp finish as well. It's zesty, um, easy drinking wines. Of course, that is from uh, Chateau de Charme. So that is a, you know, that is a pretty prolific winery out of yeah. Ontario. And then you have uh, Vineland Estates. Elevations. This is something that Vic Carradine, who's an older sommelier, has been in the business like 40 years, okay. has highly regarded. This is a sweet version, so a lot of residual sugar, great with chocolates, milk chocolate, white nice. chocolate. So if you want to hand a chocolate bouquet to somebody, you know, a chocolate and a bouquet with it, with a bottle of wine, what a wonderful pairing. Absolutely. Couldn't agree yeah, more. Yeah, just uh, what a way to just kick off the day tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Have your lover come home, have the bottle of wine ready for them, you're good to go. Exactly. And another thing that you, you've always supported and that's, you know, going out and enjoying as well and, and, you know, supporting those fantastic restaurants. Any recommendations here in Ottawa? Yeah, places like the Riviera Mezzanade. My uh, friend Tony Cananico runs a great operation uh, downtown. There's a few great spots, uh, you know, Chitura, Vittoria, oh, Preston yeah. Street, uh, just loaded with places. <laughs> there's true. something that we do not lack in Ottawa. It's a culinary experience. There's tons of options to do tomorrow. Yeah, just get out there and enjoy it. Yeah, no, and I, I couldn't agree more because, you know, in the past two decades, right, the restaurant culinary scene in Ottawa has just gone next level. And as you said, there, there's so many, so many to enjoy. Um, another thing that, that's really come back to, and I think you're doing kind of a hybrid now, right, is, is people are doing more events and getting together and they doing are. tastings and that sort of thing. What, what's popular these days? Because, you know, you're a beer sommelier, a wine sommelier as well. A hybrid of the two. So I'm back okay. to live tastings. A lot of people want tastings with canopies, like tapas, things like this. So easy finger plates of food. Then they want to learn about some wine and beer pairings that go with it. 
it. And a lot of people love the engagement. What we do now with the Drunken Grape was to do games in between, like trivia and things oh, like nice. that to get things Great going. Idea. So we've added that element in and picked up some good clients lately. Things are moving well. So it's, it's good to see the live engagement back. I mean, the virtual had its place, but it's over now. Let's shelf that. Yeah, like yeah. The hybrid, I, I don't mind I because at least you're getting together with your group of friends and I can come on on the screen, but that's different. At least you're engaging in that aspect yeah. live. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing beats being there live. When you when you go to choose a wine, Rob, you know, just to pick your brain, I mean, because I think, you know, you go into the LCBO or if you're on the Quebec side, the SAQ, it's intimidating, right? And you sort of wander around. What what should people look for? What's the first step, you know, before you even walk in maybe to the LCBO? Well, research the grape varietal you're looking at. So if you okay. know that you want Riesling, for instance, do some research on Riesling. What are highly rated Rieslings out there? Why? And a lot of it always comes down to balance, integration, and concentration of flavor. Those are the kinds of things that come along. Uh, and length of flavor. Sommeliers call it Blick. Oh, it's Blick. interesting. Okay. Blick is an acronym. And really what you want to look at, because often you have these things with food, is you want to look at how it cuts complements the flavor, cuts into the flavor, contrasts with the flavor like uh, sweet and spicy, for instance, and what balance it brings to a dish right. while you're enjoying it. Those are just some basics, you know, that yeah, people can yeah, take exactly. with them. And I think that's important because it is a complex world. I can tell you studying it, there's volumes of books you go through to get these designations. And you do not need to do that. too, right, Rob? I mean, it's yes. not necessarily, just because a wine is expensive doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's better. No, right? Uh, no, right. Do you absolutely. think that's come a long way? Is, yes. Is, is the affordability and, and getting a great product, even though the price isn't, you know, up there in the $30 range? Sure. I mean, one of the worst wines I had was 70 bucks, believe it or not. Really? Right. I won't name the vineyard, but it was, <laughs> I, I was like, excited. I'm like, oh my God, this is like a version of an Amarone. But from Canada, I tried it, it was horrible. Really? Eh? Yeah. Whereas the wines here, this is like 23 bucks. I think this is about 16 or 17. It's on special right now, so you save okay. $3 okay. for the LCBO. This is a bit more of a reach because Pinot Noir is an expensive grape to cultivate properly so that one's like $35 so what I did here was I brought a package of what people could really experience as far as yeah, price range. it's a great it's it's a great yeah. range that you brought here Rob always a pleasure thank you so much for Cheers, joining man. us really thank appreciate you. it thank you I'll be right back after this